not born. So I'm going to be reading the claim that owning a pet can enhance your life. Her first claim was that owning a pet can help with depression, and her second claim was owning a pet can help with health-related issues. I want to point out that depression is a health-related issue, so that therefore combines them into one, so I can refute them as such. Her first reference was WebMD, which in my opinion is not a reputable site, simply because in order to get onto that site you have to be a doctor, but you don't have to be a doctor of medicine. The second article she cited was from the Huffington Post. I went ahead and researched this article, and the opening statement is, I don't have any personal experience of depression, but I understand that there can be days when someone suffers and can barely make it out of bed, let alone get out of the house to walk a dog. I feel as if this doesn't help her claim, but simply makes it worse, because if you don't want to get out of bed to walk your dog, you're going to have more depression because you have a dog to take, take care of. Finally, it sounds more to me that it suggests that animals add to depression as opposed to taking away from it. So far as owning pets and health-related issues, she cited Pets.com. I went to this website, and this is actually the PetSmart.com guidelines. So PetSmart wants you to buy pets because they're PetSmart. They get money up if you buy and pet from them, and once you own the pet, you have to go there for health care, and you have to go there for overall food. This therefore makes, in my opinion, the website invalid, because everything on that site is biased. Another article she cites from this website shows that of 240 married couples surveyed, they are happier because of they have pets. I think this is more because they have a partner as opposed to a pet. You're going home, her argument was that you're going home to a pet, but if you're going home to a partner, which is more important, the pet or the partner. Finally, I did my own research. I could not find any research that stated that pets did not have a depression. I could, however, find research that stated pets are harmful to your health. First one is from the California Legislative Branch, and it says, potentially dangerous and vicious dogs have become a serious and widespread threat to the safety and welfare of citizens of this state. In recent years, they have harmed numerous individuals, particularly children. If this is somebody's pet, and is supposedly good for people's health, if it's mauling people's faces, I think not. <laughs> so in response to this, they have laid out the following laws. Existing laws are inadequate to deal with this threat for public health, and safety has been posed for potentially vicious dogs. This means they need to train the owners which in turn could help their life, but in the same time they're required to go to law. Finally, I would like to cite something from Lawyers.com, which is a website which specializes in dealing with pet-related incidents. In the US, in the last two years, 30 to 35 fatal dog attacks have happened, and these are just the ones that have been reported to this company. It is my opinion that overall, owning a pet is not beneficial to your life because there are no citable or evidence towards this. And finally, it's not beneficial to other people's life if you do not keep your pet under, under control. All right, the main claims are uh, listed. You kind of try to collapse them so that they are distinct because you're saying, well, mental health issues are still health issues. I'm not sure what that gets you and what the advantage is of doing that, except that uh, it means that you're not going to respond to the issues separately. And since none of your arguments really deal directly with either the physical benefits or the mental health benefits, but rather counterclaims and some general challenges on the evidence, I don't know why you bothered making uh, such a distinction. 
distinction. It wasn't all that important to you. Um, I thought that uh, you did talk a little bit about uh, some of the uh, issues that are problematic um, that might be faced by pet owners, and I think that those are good counterclaims. But you start off with kind of a strange challenge on WebMD, which suggests that because only doctors can get on it, you don't have to be a particular medical kind of doctor. I, I, what, does that get, what does that get you in the long run? If the person that they quoted is a medical doctor, we have no problem with it. If they're not a medical doctor, you should be pointing that out. So in essence, the general challenge on the website makes no sense, and it's a site that generally people see as having a high degree of credibility. So your challenge on it is probably going to create some antipathy towards you. On the other issue, I do think you have a valid point. You're, you've got a hypothetical here. Look, if you're depressed, wouldn't it be depressing you, you if you couldn't even walk your dog? Think about the dog getting sick. And by the way, you want to know what's depressing? Losing a pet. You know, <laughs> if you have a pet and it dies, that'll, and, or you have to have it put down, holy crime, the world's full of people who get suicidal over those kinds of things. It shouldn't be hard to find a couple of examples of that to apply to that particular point. All right. Uh, the, the, the kind of challenge on the pets.com site being a commercial site, that's maybe a little bit more useful, although, again, it sounds like the articles are listed at the site. It's not so much that they have written them themselves as they are making them available here. So I'm not sure that that gets you very much. Um, you know, it's a pretty broad challenge of bias uh, to suggest that. That would be like saying, well, my goodness, you know, this restaurant magazine, they're in the business of evaluating restaurants, so they can't have an honest criticism of a restaurant because they're you know, in the business of restaurants. That's... That, that's so circular, it's, uh, you know, it reduces it to an absurdity. I think your challenge needs to be more specific. Um, I think the challenge on causality is a little bit more specific, and that's the kind of thing that you need to do. I did think that the counterclaim about the pets being harmful to their owners was an interesting example. You went for the most kind of harm, for instance, uh, vicious dogs and death and dismemberment and those kinds of things. I think there are probably other health issues that animals represent. Uh, there are women who... Um, exposed to cat feces, might have problems in pregnancy. There are all kinds of people who have allergies to dog and cat uh, dander, and all of those might have been good counterclaims to go along with as well, and they're a lot more general. If you're just going to rely on the 31 people who've been mauled to death by a dog as your counterpoint, I'm not sure that that's as strong as it could be. All right, thank you.